guys. Welcome to worship this morning, this beautiful Memorial Day weekend. We welcome those that uh, might be looking at the back of people's heads right now on our uh, um, live uh, uh, broadcast on YouTube. We decided to move the camera today um, and just put it in the back there, um, just because it seems like people are kind of en route to coming back to fellowship, and we want to encourage that. Um, Both things. I mean, if you still feel comfortable to be at home, uh, we welcome you guys that are at home. And uh, really the challenge, too, is if you live in some other place, um, maybe God is calling you to be part of a fellowship there as well. Even though we appreciate, I appreciate the feedback I get from people that watch uh, during the week. You know, it's a great time this weekend. Obviously, we want to uh, um, in just a moment, we will take a moment to just be quiet a little bit and, and thank God for, for those who have given their lives uh, for um, the purpose of freedom and uh, for uh, the rights of people and for, uh, to break oppression and all the things that the Lord Jesus came to do. Um, we know that in, in our end of things. Sometimes that is uh, military service and lives that were actually given uh, for the sake of maintaining peace and order, uh, not only in our country, but in the world. And we are so grateful for those lives. The scripture says, ascribe to the Lord, O families of people, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength, ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. And that word ascribe, we don't really tend to think of it too much in our modern language, but it really is to attribute uh, to God those things, to attribute to God those glory, or to call attention to His um, amazing glory and strength. And so, Lord, we do that today. We um, come before You to um, ascribe to You glory, God, and uh, ascribe to You um, to, to recognize, to Uh, point out, to um, call attention to, uh, God, the the wonderful things about you. Uh, Lord, that you really are the one who truly can bring peace and truly bring uh, unity throughout our world, Lord God, Um, but that you demonstrate your love in sending your Son for us, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And so this way of, of sacrificial love that we celebrate and, and uh, honor uh, people who have walked in that path this weekend, Lord. Uh, we recognize that uh, their lives in many ways uh, modeled um, what you um, already have as an attribute of your love, Lord, to, to be a self-giving God and to um, even be willing to be sacrificial for the sake of others, Lord. We see that as an attribute of you first and foremost, Lord. So again, thank you, Lord. And, and um, right now, Lord, we just want to be quiet before you to, to remember um, those people, Lord. Just hear our prayers and our thoughts, oh God. Gracious Father, it's so easy for us to forget or not be able to even imagine what it would be like to live in a different place, uh, to live perhaps in a, in a country that uh, wouldn't allow for this kind of free expression of worship of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, Lord, that we uh, have no idea, perhaps at least some of us, Lord, I know I don't know what it would be like to just meet underground or to um, actually know that my life is at stake all the time because I honor you, Jesus, as Lord and Savior. And Lord, the fact that we are here today and are able to gather in this building is also an actual intentional byproduct of those who have uh, given their lives, um, Lord, uh, to maintain freedom and peace and democracy around the world, Lord. And so we 
Um, God, we know we're puzzled with those things sometimes in terms of what, what is your ideal government, Lord. It's where you rule and reign, God. Um, and we know that we're far away from that, Lord, but uh, we do want to honor those, Lord, who have given their lives to serve this country, to, to serve you, uh, to serve causes of freedom around the world, Lord. Thank you for them. We lift up their families today, and uh, we pray for those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, Lord. Uh, may you uh, comfort them with only the comfort, God, that you uh, can give, that which is from above and, and really really penetrates the heart, God, and answers the deep questions, Lord. Uh, thank you for that, Lord. Help us to worship in spirit and truth now, Lord, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Welcome, you guys, to sing. Rise from African clay. It's the song of the forgiven, drowning at the hammers I read. The song of ladies and believers, filled with God's holy fire. It's every child, every tongue, every nation. Love song born of a different choir. It's all God's spirit singing for a glory. Hallelujah, he reigns. He reigns. All God's spirit singing for a glory. Hallelujah, he reigns. He reigns. Let it rise for the four winds, part of the heavenly sound. That praises that go from the towns of the cathedral to the faithful gathered underground. Of all the songs from song the dawn of creation, some were meant to persist. Of all the bells rung from a thousand steeples, number rings to All the powers of darkness can't out a single word. And all the powers of darkness tremble at what they just heard. Cause all the powers of darkness can't out a single word. And I got to sing it for a glory. So long and 
Bless you for that song, God. Your grace is enough. And Lord, as I was singing it, I, I couldn't help but the, the vision of what that really means, Lord. It's not someone who's just cupped their hand and has, you know, two little pieces of rice and is just saying thankful. That's, I'm enough. That's enough. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. No, Lord, it's more like a... a, a a bridegroom and his bride, like having a private moment after the wedding ceremony and just gazing into each other's eyes and saying, you're, you're enough. This is what it's all about. It's all about me and you. It's about this relationship that we have with you and your unmerited favor flowing into our lives. God, that is enough for us, and it is more than enough. It is glorious. So God, remember the promise to your people, Lord, that you would never leave us nor forsake us. Um, God, that um, you would remember, Lord, today that we are your children, God, and that you would deal with us as a loving Father, we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Hey, remain standing just for a moment as we uh, read God's Word. Uh, together there. If you turn uh, to your note page and those watching online, um, I want to say we're in Matthew 25, beginning right there, verses 1, uh, 1 through 13. Uh, But let's remain standing. And again, we do welcome those that are watching online. We love you guys. We miss you guys. And especially those of you that like moved out of the area. It's just that uh, goodness, it's so cool to be able to reach out and still be in contact with you. And um, goodness, people from San Diego to Idaho and beyond, um, we're, so, we're so grateful to, to touch base with you this way. And those that are here local, just not feeling ready to come back yet, or, or goodness, the tool of this, right? Say, say one day you weren't feeling good or had a rough night or whatever, you could know and, and join with us this way as well. Let's look at Matthew 25.13, an amazing parable set in the light of, uh, and, and kids, yeah, I'm going to dismiss you, uh, teenage crew, you guys can head out, sorry, I was realizing why Todd is standing there in the back looking at me, 
So thank you, Todd and Ruth, for doing that today, and David and Lisa, when you guys do it. Um, we're so appreciative of the Sunday school, our teaching effort for our, our teenagers. Let's look at Matthew 25 again. Jesus has been teaching on what things will be like um, at his coming. He says, at that time, in other words, at that time of his coming, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was long, was a long time coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. No, they replied, There may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to be in the wedding banquet. And the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. And Lord, bless the reading of your word. Um, help us to, to uh, just be encouraged today uh, by this and instructed by it as well, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Hey, what a great parable, so much in it here. We could uh, mine out all kinds of things, and uh, eventually in the parable, I'm actually going to uh, challenge you not to overmine these kind of things and, and look for hidden meanings in them and whatnot. It's really interesting that Jesus tells us clearly what the parable is about. And so let's begin there. Let's begin, and, and, and you guys, this is so important to get. Always begin with what you uh, can most simply know from a text and what God has just made plain to us, right? I mean, you can study John 3.16 all your life, right? For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son that whoever believes in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. You can study everlasting life. You can study what it means to perish. You can study the love of God. You can study the missionality of God in that He sent His Son into the world, this sending nature of God. You can study all those things and have a rich understanding of that passage and miss the joy of it and the glory of it that God has sent His Son to redeem you. And so always start with what is the most basic message of the passage and work from there. So let's begin with the ultimate point of this story. It's in verse 13. And it's after the story is over. And Jesus, this is Jesus himself talking to the people that listened to him. They just heard the story. Isn't it awesome when you just hear a story and then the person telling the story explains it? They're like, wow, thank you for that little extra information. The New Living Translation translates it this way, so you, meaning his hearers, us today, too, must keep watch, for you do not know the day or the hour of my return. Now, how did the New Living get to that place where it's his return? Well, that's putting it in the context of both Matthew 24 and Jesus has been talking about the signs of the end, right? And, and, uh, He said there's going to be wars and rumors of wars and famines and different things and false Christs coming and all these things. But now, after saying all these events that are going to take place, uh, even between the time of his death and resurrection and, and the culmination of history, there's going to be all these kind of events that just keep unfolding in our world. But now, specifically, let me talk to you about what it will be like 
at the time of my coming. The ESV just has it just roughly more perfectly translated from the Greek. Simply says watch, or we could use the word be alert. Therefore, for you do not, or you neither know the day nor the hour. That is the point of the story. To be ready and watchful and to endure. Jesus is exhorting his listeners to be enthusiastic in the moment. That's the beauty of this story. There's these 10 virgins that are enthusiastic in the moment. They're eager for the bridegroom to come. We're eager for his return today. But we're also possessing a readiness and a preparedness for enduring while patiently waiting. That's the heart of it, you guys. Simply put, be watchful while in patiently enduring, prepared for the long haul. Now about this phrase, the day or the hour, um, or the hour or the day, either way it's a combination, not about like, a, like this just a chronological moment, but also a, 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 an event, right? It is about the culmination of the age. It's a specific moment in history where things are unraveling, but God is culminating the age the fullness of his kingdom in the second coming of Christ, right? It's not like you go, hmm, I think I understand. He said, I couldn't know the day or the hour, but maybe I could understand the week or the month or the year. Like he, he didn't give me day or hour, but I know I got week, month, and year. And, and that's not the way it's to be understood. This is about God's timing in his second coming, the culmination of the age. Thus, when he says you don't know the day or the hour, he means that you cannot fully discern God's timing by looking at the calendar or looking at the news. But if you get the parable, you can be ready. You can be ready in that situation. Jesus says, you don't know the day, so continue to be ready and understand that it might take longer, so be ready for that too. Actually, this is the genius of the parable, you guys. Think about it. The only way to be ready right now is to be prepared for the long haul. And the only way to be prepared for the long haul is to be ready right now. And the only way to be ready right now is to be prepared for the long haul. Do you see how it's just... This thing that just, it's always like this perpetual motion, the way Jesus has set up this story, right? It's not to be understood that, man, on day three, like like a TV show, on day three, you know, three more of the virgins had to tap out because they were out of oil. And finally, in the end, the smartest one, who actually turns out that her dad owned the oil company and had pulled up a truck for her, she was the one that made it. It's not that way. It's not to be understood that way. It's to be understood as this this interesting, amazing story about being ready right now and yet ready for the long haul. And ready for the long haul means you're ready right now. And that's what a true believer does. You guys, this is not a story that we uh, think of it more like a football game. And I know if you know football, uh, you like to watch other parts of the football a game, um, but uh, the, the rest of us that are just enjoying the game, we tend to go uh, where, where the ball goes, right? I mean, that's usually the most important thing. Now, sometimes, you know, the, the play reels back and you realize that, that uh, while the guy was running down for the touchdown, there were, you know, somebody was holding somebody or someone roughed the quarterback or something. And the camera brings us back to that. For, but for the most part, you just move your, your image moves with the ball, right? And you follow what that's happening there. And so in this story, we follow the wise virgins who get to be with the bridegroom. That's the important part. Now, these uh, uh, virgins in a, in a modern translation, New Living calls them bridesmaids. I, I think a better way for us to understand them is more like a wedding entourage, like, uh, I, I was thinking, I was joking with Kimber on the way up. I said, hey, if you're, if you're going to go with me right now, you're going to drive because dad just needs to look at his notes a little bit more and just kind of chill. And, and so then I started laughing in the car, and she's like, what are, you, what are you laughing about? I was like, 
Oh, because I, I think it'd be fun to design a wedding uh, that, was, that, that would try and emulate the weddings of back in the day, right? Back in Jesus' day. So we're all seated here. But we look around and we notice that there's, there's like these 10 gals that are like dressed to the T, right? Um, the, the, and, and you can't tell which one is the bride. They're all, they're all matching. But they're seated amongst us. They're just seated out here and not, nothing else is going on. And then there's this loud shout that the bridegroom is here. And so they get up and just tear out of the building. And celebrating, cheering, going, he's here, he's here. And, and, they, and they leave, and then they come back in, and the celebration begins. I mean, have you ever been to a wedding like that? That would be pretty exciting to see something different, right? No, we tend to put all our attention on the bride. But these People were literally, it wasn't like they were just there by accident. They were there with intention, right? This is, this is actually our calling is to be these young gals that are ready for this, this coming of the bridegroom so that we can enhance the celebration and cause it to be glorious. Look there if in your notes, if you can find, uh, just kind of scrolling down there, uh, where Paul talks in 2 Thessalonians to the church, and it says, on the day that He, Jesus, comes to be glorified in His holy people and marveled at among those who have believed. Like, like that's not just a matter of fact, but that's a, a, a part of the event. If, if we who are alive and remain are here when the Lord returns, well, we get to meet up with those that have died in Christ before us. But here's the point. We get to glorify in His holy people. It's this incredible celebration. And we get to marvel at, uh, among uh, all those who have believed. Like the marveling and the glory is part of what you've been called to. And so these gals are just living up to what they've been called to. And, and yet, Jesus, Jesus says, follow in my story the ones that are prepared to go the long haul. I'm telling you a story so that you'll be ready and enduring. That's the point of the story. The writer of Hebrews puts it this way, you need to persevere so that when you've done the will of God, you will receive what He has promised. Church, be encouraged to continue on, to persevere. When you've done God's will in your life, you're going to receive what He promised. We're all going to receive what his, He promised. He says, for just in a little while, He who is coming will come and will not delay. And, but my righteous one will live by faith, and I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. Wow. I've often marveled at that. I've memorized that verse because there have been times where I've wanted to shrink back from faith. There's been times in my discouragement where I wanted to choose a pathway of unbelief. You know, kind of, kind of spiral down in that hopelessness or whatever that just can come. And then this, the line here, it's, you know, there's, God takes no pleasure in that. In fact, in Hebrews 11, it says that it, it, in order to, we must have faith in order to please God. Remember what it said about, uh, uh, um, about Enoch, that Enoch walked with God and was taken, and, and, and that we commend him for having faith because, because he's a person that pleased God. And then it says, and without faith, it's impossible to please God. And so the pleasure in the relationship with God is, is when you believe and when you trust, even in the long haul, right? And when you show yourself to be ready daily, but yet going the long haul. So make no mistake, uh, there are two groups, but I'm going to say that the wise gals in our parable are like those who have faith, who don't shrink back. Uh, look back up to verse 39 of Hebrews there. Um, and uh, again, I didn't, I didn't really put that. It's Hebrews 10. Um, but it says, um, it says, but we don't belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but those who have faith and are saved. Again, following the, 
the wise virgins in the story, the wise gals in our parable are those who have faith and are saved. And they demonstrate that by their preparedness. But make no mistake, there are two groups at the coming of the Lord, just like there were two groups of gals, right? There was the wise gals and the foolish gals. And, and the point would be to us just to say, I want, instead of me overanalyzing who the unwise are, I just want to be part of the wise, Right? I want to be in the wise group. I'm not, I'm not concerned with trying to figure out what the other part of the story means. And, and, and I run into that a lot. Like, like well, I think so-and-so is, is one of the five foolish versions that doesn't have their lamp filled, and they're not, you know. And, and you get in these weird conversations. I, I do think that perhaps that might be a tool that you might use in a conversation with somebody that you know seems to have fallen away or is not living the life. Like if you know them and you have that voice in their life, you know, ask them like, what, what, what do you think about this parable and, what, and what, how can I encourage you? Um, because again, the, the emphasis is not on, really on those people in this story. And yet in our day and time we go, but... But it does bring up an interesting thing. Who, who are these people? Again, I just want to make super clear this morning that, that God has called you to be one, the wise person in this story, the wise virgin in the story, the person who's ready now and in the long haul. That's the flow of the story. Jesus says, you also, be alert. Therefore, I just told you this story. Now you guys... Be ready and be willing to go the long haul. Now in the story, the bridegroom is delayed. And the hearers would have understood this. Hey, that's the bridegroom's prerogative. That sometimes happens. And, uh, and, and, and it's just Jesus' way of, of, of emphasizing how um, there needs to be the willingness to go the long haul. Um, I think now in retrospect, we can see that he was setting up believers for all time to, to understand, uh, uh, just like the writer uh, Peter says, and the psalmist says, uh, a thousand years is as a day as the Lord, and a day is as a thousand years, and we should not regard his coming in terms of slowness, but rather that none should perish, right? And all come to repentance, that God in his slowness is 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 is. Uh, the timing of that is about those who are yet to believe, right? We also see that the virgins fell asleep, even the wise ones. Hey, again, this might be overlooking at it, but I just want to say there, it's not some sin on their part. It's not representative of the church falling asleep in the light or all these things. It's just real life. These people aren't superheroes. Aren't you glad that Jesus didn't tell us a story about these superhero gals that never had to sleep, that went 10 days in a row without any sleep and had enough oil because they were that equipped and everything? And now next week at church, you know, we all show up in our, in our backpacking gear, you know, just in case, and we're all loaded down with black beans and whatever. You know, it's just that's, that's overlooking at it. But I do think that we need to remember that you know, he, he, he's, he's kind of flavoring the story with, hey, it's regular life. Regular life and, and uh, the event that you're excited for doesn't happen exactly right away when you hope that it would, and yet I'm calling you to be ready <clears throat> for the long haul. Excuse me. <clears throat> and so we need to be good listeners of the parable. Just I was writing down all these things. We tend to do these things. We're like, why were they? Why were they virgins? Is there some interesting thing about that? What does the oil mean? What do the lamps represent? Why was the bridegroom delayed? Does that mean that Jesus is going to be purposely delayed? Were the foolish gals people who lost their salvation? <clears throat> is preparedness? And I think this is one of the most important questions we need to address. Is preparedness an addition to grace and faith? In other words, we all come to Christ through grace and faith, but the real Christians are the prepared ones. And, 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 and you're going to be shortchanged in the end? 
No, the real believer is the prepared believer. And so we could go on with our questions while missing Jesus' summary. Be alert. Be ready. Again, let me read 2 Corinthians 1.16. We need to take the, the, the harsh reality into mind that yes, there are two groups at the coming of the Lord. Those that are ready for Him and those who are not. God is just. He will pay back trouble on those who trouble you and give relief to you who are troubled and to us as well. This will happen when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven in blazing fire with His powerful angels. He will punish those who do not know God and who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. They will be punished with everlasting destruction and shut out from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His might. On the day when He comes, what? To be glorified in His holy people and marveled at among all those who have believed. This includes you because you believed our testimony to you. And so church, let's just keep testifying to the Lord. Let's keep bearing witness to the Lord. Let's keep seeing how God will add to His kingdom. But make no mistake, there are two groups at the end. Those who are ready and waiting His coming and those who are not. And God invites you, right? to be in that group that is ready. This includes you because you believed our testimony. And what was the testimony? The testimony was Jesus Christ risen from the dead, crucified and risen from the dead. God's lamb, God's provision for our salvation to be trusted in and believed in and hoped in. Now in the case of the parable... We see that the wise gals were wise, why? Because they had what? Extra oil, okay? So we do want to pay attention to that part of the story. What is our extra oil? Well, I believe it would be having the understanding today that endurance is needed in your Christian walk, that you are a person that's going the long haul with Jesus, and that that is, that is what you do as a follower of Him. You're, you're ready to go the long haul. You're, you're, not, you're not just focused about the culmination of the age. It's like, Lord, that's your timing. It's not my timing. I long for your appearing. I long for your coming because that means life everlasting. And it means the culmination of all things. And, oh God, I long for that day. But I am okay if that day is not today or tomorrow, or the next day, because I'm, I'm ready to just do what you want me to do now. So I understand that, I believe that what extra oil can mean is, uh, and, and, and you could link it, right, to it's a lamp, right, testimony, it's oil, right, the fullness of the Spirit, and, and the ability to um, have a, a Spirit-empowered witness. You could go, wow, there, that's there. But again, that, that would be like a secondary understanding of it. The first and primary understanding is, is be ready now and be prepared for the long haul. And once again, we find ultimately that patience that's needed and the readiness that's needed now, and yet readiness in the universe. What is that really like? That's the abiding life again, is it not? And so we come full circle to that all the time. God's invitation, Jesus' invitation to abide. Paul says, since we live by the Spirit, let's keep in step with the Spirit. That's what it means to continue on in Him. Jesus said, remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. And we, and we know that language. We're familiar with that language. So in the wisdom of it, if, if we're to ask the question like, well, what, 
what could be our extra oil in the situation? Would it not be the mindset in your heart to go the long haul with the Lord? To, and, and yet, and yet ha, have, a, have an eagerness about it as well. Like that's the tension that God's calling you to live in. And ask yourself, where, where am I at in that? Because that's so hard for us, is it not? Like, like, I mean, we wouldn't expect our, our, our child that, let's say we had promised to go a trip to Disneyland, uh, to, to be just as enthusiastic on like day 10 that it was taking in the summer. Like, hey, sometime we're going to go this summer. And it's day 15 in the summer, and we're like, hey, how come you're not enthusiastic to go to Disneyland anymore? Like, what's going on? Like, we would understand that that would be kind of weird for them to, to maintain a, a, a joy in wanting to go and a readiness to go and yet be willing to endure the whole summer to go. We would recognize that as a very difficult thing. And, and, and that's the difficult thing in our story is, is how do we as, as Christians maintain a, a readiness and an eagerness for His coming even right now, right this moment, and, and, and actually that meaning that I'm living currently with Him, I'm abiding in Him, I'm walking in His will, I've not fallen away from Him, I'm not doing other things that are, are more important than that which He's called me to. I, I'm, I'm giving myself as do everything as unto the Lord, right? So, so it doesn't matter what job we have or whatever that we're, we're serving and we're doing, we're being faithful um, because we think and we know that our Lord could appear any moment and we want to be found in Him ready. Like the whole thing with the bridegroom deal is, is they were to get up and go out and light their lamps and be part of that celebration. It was a thing where, man, it's on right now, go. And so that they're, they're actually waiting is part of their job. They're good to go. They're ready. And, and so we, we get that that's a tension that we live in. And so we're constantly asking to be filled. And we're constantly coming before the Lord and abiding. And we're constantly reminding ourselves of His coming and His, the culmination of all things. And, and that He ultimately is the answer. And yet he's, he's got me down here in the here and now doing things for Him. And let's keep track of that. So we could say readiness now, and this is probably the last page of your notes, readiness now is joy, joy in your abiding. I mean, right, you guys tracking with me on this? Wouldn't it be easier to just go online to the Bible bookstore online or whatever? I go to christianbooks.org and just say, man, I need some more lamps and some more oil. (laughs) Some more wicks and some more oil, and now I'm good to go. Man, thank you for backup supply. Build some more shelves in my garage. I, I wish it was sometimes that simple, right? But now we do need to go. What is G, what, what can we take from that? If he's saying be ready now and be ready for the long haul, what could that mean to us? It's abiding, right? It's obeying. That's the now part. It's serving. It's growing. It's, it's waiting and enduring even in the now. It's letting your light shine, right? Becoming today. Let's have the commitment to become today all that God has called me, you to be as His servant witnesses in the world. Let's be that today. And we can say that having extra oil is keeping on in that same abiding, serving, growing, wanting, or I mean waiting, um, but, but it's a sense of the heart is the long haul. And so my being filled today, really, this is the interesting part of it, is because we also know, right, in the Bible, the contradict or not contradictory, but the, the interesting, uh, like, contrasting things would be the, the, the people that went out, right, in Moses' time to collect more manna than they were prescribed to. They went out, they tried to get two, three days worth, and it all rotted and everything, and God calls them out on it. He said, I told you to go out one day at a time and get what you needed for the day, and guess what? The day before the Sabbath, you get to go out and get two days worth. 
But if you try and get two days worth on Monday, it's going to spoil before Tuesday. And it was that interesting thing, what, that God taught that man should not uh, live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, right? And, and he taught them, I want this to be about a daily thing. I want this to be about you coming and being filled daily. There's no way that you can be filled today and then be done with it and it lasts you 10 years. And yet, what is the way to last 10 years? Is it not to be filled today? That's, that's the, the weird part of it, the irony in it or the mystery in it is, God, there's no way I can get enough of you today to just last me the rest of my life. But the only way I can get enough of you to last me the rest of my life is to get that relationship with you today, to abide in you today. That's what Jesus told about this, this masterful parable. In the end, in the end, it's going to be like that. All these crazy things, yes, are going to be happening, but, but there's going to be these people that are ready in the moment and for the long haul. And so the Lord is not slow in keeping His promise. If some has understood slowness, and said He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance, 2 Peter 2. Listen, there's, there's so many people that understand this story in terms of fear. Oh my gosh, what's going to happen? Am I, am I one of the five foolish virgins? Like, some of us, like, just give me the clipboard for that, right? Because I'm going to sign up for that right now. I am that guy who will forget stuff. Like, you guys that go on the men's retreat, right, you know, like, Man, it's like if someone doesn't partner with me, we're going to have everything we need but one thing, right? We're going to have all, all the stuff except for the match to start the fire, right? Ask my daughters about some backpacking trips we've been on. It's like, do we have everything oh, except for one thing? <laughs> Man, that's going to make things really hard. And so I, I actually relate to the possibility of being this person that's not found ready, being ready. And, and, and so when I look through that through the modern cultural lens, I can sometimes see a God who's just like, man, if you're not on point, you're out. And I know there are Christians that live that kind of experience. Man, if I'm not on point, I'm out. And it's just like, no, that's not what the story's about. That's not the God that we serve. He is slow in keeping his, he's not slow in keeping his promise like you would understand slowness. No, he's slow in that he's not wanting people to perish. God's wanting you to return. God's wanting your lamp to be full. God's wanting you to be ready to go the long haul. That is the Lord our God who, who pours that kind of life into us and says, be of the wise that would move forward in this. So Paul, in talking to Timothy, says, Now there's in store for me the crown of righteousness with the Lord. The righteous judge will reward me on that day, and not only to me, but all who have longed for His appearing. Yes, I am coming soon, Jesus said at the end of Revelation. And the response is, Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. But we see from this story that preparedness is synonymous with true belief, you guys. If, if, if you're not prepared or longing for His coming today, why not? Why not? And yet, if you're not prepared to go the long haul and endure and serve Him as however long it takes, why not? Why not? Have you, have you lost sight of who He is? I mean, the bridegroom was the most important part, and, the, and, and, and they couldn't wait for Him to come. And yet, they knew if He was going to take a long time, they, they wanted to be ready for that. And, and so the event happens, and the wise go out to greet Him, and they light their lamps, and, and, and what God intended takes place. And so be on the alert. The Greek word really means to be awake, to watch. You could even say to be alive. To be attentive, vigilant. 
Or there's a word that we don't use very often, circumspect. In other words, like you risking it all that he might not come today, you living a life that he might not come today, it is a foolish risk. Like, wh- why? Why? When God is calling you to be ready now and yet ready for the long haul. Let's pray. Lord, we live in that mystery, God. I mean, if ever there was a time where we're just like, oh, he's coming tonight. I wish you would come, Lord. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of numb to it again, Lord God, because I've sort of turned the news off for a little while, but it doesn't take much for my phone to light up and tell me that there was another shooting or tell me that there's a possibility of another war or that there is a war um, or, Lord, to, to see how famine and pestilence and, and plague and... Um, government and oppression and, and on and on is ruining the lives of so many and, and, and we see that and we know that you're the answer and we long for you to return, Lord. We long for you to return. We're eager, like the ten bridesmaids, God, we are just, we're just eager and, 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 and we're listening and we're waiting. But in this story, you, you call us to also be ready for it to take longer than we anticipated and to anticipate that as well. And so, Lord, I for one just want to pray for our church, uh, pray for myself, pray for my family, pray for my friends, these that are here. Um, Lord, if there's something that is keeping us from being current with you right now, what would that be? Expose our hearts in it that we could just simply repent and turn and that you would be our first love and that we would cry out, you know, create in me a pure heart, O oh God. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Renew me, God. Renew me in, in, in just this passionate pursuit of you today. You passionately came from heaven to pursue me and to seek and save me. And you went to the cross for me. Lord, oh God, that I would not live a life that's not at all a reflection of that same passion for you. We desire today a new as a holy sacrifice, pure, and, and, and our right thing is to lay our lives down anew to you, a living sacrifice. And endure. Lord, strengthen us to go one more day, to go one more week, to go one more month, to go one more year, to go ten more years in being faithful to you, to go to the end of our lives or till the day of your coming, Lord. Grant us an endurance. Grant us full, full extra tanks of oil. And, and yet, Lord, we, we, just, we just live in that tension, God. We cannot get enough today in this church service, on our face the rest of the day, fasting all week to get us to go the long haul. And yet, and yet, it is what you're calling us to do in this very moment that will allow us to endure. And so we respond. We just say yes. We just say we open our hearts to you, new God, and, and we, we, we recognize this, this wonderful tension of just abiding in you richly today and having a heart that's ready to go the long haul. 
Lord, I said that a bazillion times today because I, I see and I believe that is the heart of the parable. And so, Lord, if we heard it, like maybe even one too many times, the good thing is, is we'll remember it. by next Sunday morning, that you've called us to be a people ready now and ready for the long haul. Thank you for that, Jesus. What a rich calling we have in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand, you guys, and we'll sing together. Thousand stories of one day. Think you're what I heard. Tender whispers of love. The dead of night as you tell me. Write a place and I am never alone. You're a good. Part of our being ready today and ready for the long haul is praying for one another. And just got a note here 
uh, obviously communicated through family uh, for uh, Cindy Wilson, Cindy and Rodney Wilson, you know, uh, Rodney cabinet builder lived down in, in Crowley there. And, and Rodney has a, a, like a gallstone that is affecting his pancreas and uh, uh, causing a ton of pain. He got flown out of here on uh, Saturday morning about 2 a.m. from the airport. And, and uh, I did get to see him in Reno yesterday at the hospital. And it's an intricate procedure that they're going to do uh, for him. But uh, he looked great. And yet, you know, it's that weird thing. You know, it's like there he was. He looked great in the hospital, we were knuckle bumping and everything. And, and that's because he was, you know, definitely, uh, you know, they had dealt with his pain and whatnot. But he still is in a, in a difficult place. Uh, so in our closing prayer, let's uh, lift him up as well. And, and Lord, I, pr- I pray for so many more who need uh, a special touch of your healing, a special touch of your encouragement. Um, oh Lord, to uh, the, those that are trembling, um, in a sense, because they've got, a, they got their lamp lit and they don't feel like they have any extra oil. Uh, God, meet them in that. Meet people in their healing need meet people in their encouragement need. And we lift up Rodney Wilson today and pray that tomorrow morning, Lord, that surgical procedure, oh, so delicate, to just find such a little nodule of just stuff that he needs to get rid of in his body. We pray that they'd be able to do that just just perfectly and completely, that he could be restored. And uh, give Cindy encouragement and her family as well. Um, but again, Lord, we, we know there's probably a bunch of other untold needs. And, and so, Lord, part of us being ready and long-haul type people, ready in the moment and ready for the long haul, is just to keep lifting each other up and asking for your intervention, asking for you to meet us now and give us the strength to endure. And so I pray that over people that are healing. I think of Lori McDonald, Lord, needing your touch now and yet for the long haul as well. And so many others, Lord, that we could even mention in our own hearts by name right now, God. Lord, as we would just tie this all in to Memorial Day too and, and, and people that really are just done with the long haul especially because of loss of loved ones. Um, Would you meet them, God? Would you meet them and strengthen them as well? Help us to go today, Lord. We just so want to go as people eager for your coming, eager to serve you today, and eager to wait and walk. And, and, And Lord, thank you that you're such a masterful storyteller. You said it in 13 verses in about 1.5 minutes, Lord. Thank you. In your precious name, amen. Bless you guys. Have a wonderful day in the Lord, and hopefully there's some good fellowship out in the parking lot today too as the sun. Welcome to stay inside as well, though.